the hotel scenes of the Velvet Paw of Asquith novels, also known as the Duven Books, by Thomas Caulfield, read by the author. Chapter 7, from The Alchemists of Ra, Chapter 22, in which Oscar realises that the only thing more difficult than checking into a hotel room is checking into someone else's. There was a tug at his scarf. He's not here, Vasivi said, having returned from the desk. What? The Dodora set is no longer at the hotel. He stared at her and then the desk. She'd been there only a minute. What about our reservations? He asked. Done, but the Dodora set is not here. We missed him by no more than an hour, apparently. His stare grew. Are you quite serious? She nodded, worriedly. No, I mean about you having sorted out our reservations. He looked at the desk again. It had taken him nearly a week. She gave him a key as proof. Yes, Oscar, all done. But the Dodora said it's not here. He watched some guests at the desk, none of which were hitting anything. You mean you have organised our reservations that quickly? Without needing to change your name or the alphabet or re-registering your place of birth or anything? It was her turn for confusion. What are you going on about? She didn't care, however, having greater concerns. The daughter said, Oscar, is no longer a guest at this hotel. That's unbelievable. I know. I specifically recall him saying he intended to stay here for some time to ski, relax and show off. No, I mean, it's unbelievable that you managed to confirm our room so quickly, especially with that same idiot at the desk. How in fluff did you manage it? Vasi V isn't spelt with a G, is it? He pushed past her, convinced his experience had been for their amusement and at his expense. She grabbed him. Oscar! He turned. She looked beautiful and worried, a combination in companion he'd become familiar with over his previous books. He sighed. I'm sorry. I was just rather flustered last time I was here. What are we going to do? Well, I was about to have a word. I mean about the Dodotta set. Our plan hinges on him being here. Her concern was palpable. Her conviction that the Dodotta set remained in Plempt had convinced the loud purr. If the cat wasn't here, then he could be anywhere, literally. We'd better be certain, he said. What room was he in? She thought for a moment. 413? He nodded. Right, wait here. He strode to the desk and waited at a random letter of the alphabet as it made no difference to anything. A receptionist arrived and smiled. I need to get into room 413, Oscar said, having no idea how to justify such a claim if asked. I see, sir. And why is that exactly? Because I need to. I see. There was a disinterested look at something behind the desk. I have no booking registered in suite 413, sir. I know. It was vacated recently by the bard that the dodo setting animal. He's left a manuscript behind, apparently. I've been asked to retrieve it before he sues your bottom for losses incurred. The animal stared. I beg your pardon? I'm one of his many lawyers, Oscar said, warming to the role, as he was sure all lawyers were cross and he was already indignant. And if I'm not given the key pretty smartly, the only thing you'll be renting your rooms out to are subpoenas. The receptionist swallowed. Perhaps you'd be good enough to wait here for a moment. He backed away. It would be a lot quicker if you just gave me the key. Nevertheless, perhaps you would wait? When he hurried away, Oscar turned to Vasi V and nodded that everything was under control. A moment later, the receptionist returned with a very posh-looking dog wearing glasses so low on his snout that he was apparently short-smelled. May I help you, sir? The dog said. I am the manager. Oscar held up a paw to imply he had no time for explanation. I need the key to the recently vacated room of the that dodo setting animal. And quickly, before I make a telephone call that ends up with this hotel wiping its bottom on affidavits. May I ask what all this is about? The manager asked, unconvinced. He's left a manuscript in his room that if not recovered in the next five minutes is going to give birth to more sworn statements than you have expletives in your vocabulary. It is a sweet, sir. What? 413 is a sweet, sir, not a room. What, there's a difference? 
several times the price. In fact, it also includes heated towel racks, self-fluffing pillows, and a complimentary pen. Oscar stared. Well, nevertheless, I need to retrieve the manuscript in the next five minutes, or they'll be bashing your front door down with enormous swathes of legally binding things. This was met with the sort of indifference that not caring specialises in, and paws were folded. It's not complicated, he growled. Just give me the key to 413. No. What? No, you cannot have the key. This is my hotel, and I don't like your tone. And now you can go away. During the standoff, the three looked at each other until Oscar realised that were he to remain at the desk, he'd just look silly. What about if I book the room? What? Could I book the room, perhaps? Could I book room 413? You mentioned a moment ago it was free. You mean the suite? He nodded. The manager glanced at the receptionist. Well, I don't know. I'm still rather annoyed by your tone. Oh, please he said. I'll pay for it and everything. He indicated Vasi V, who held his suitcase. I've got a suitcase. It's a nice one. Although it's dented, I buffed it before leaving Asquith, so it's quite shiny and deserves a suite. The manager glared over his glasses in a manner that even made disapproval uncomfortable. Very well, he said. If you really want it, then yes, I suppose you may, although it hasn't been cleaned yet. Oh, that's fine. I don't want it cleaned. Nevertheless, it will be. Those are the rules. Cleaning will take about 20 minutes, so do not approach the suite until such time has passed. He leant forward. And I can assure you, sir, that if any such document is found, my staff would advise me immediately. After he'd left, the receptionist asked for Oscar's name, which resulted in Oscar giving an assortment to cover all bases. And how long do you wish to stay, sir? The receptionist asked. About half an hour. I'm sorry, sir, but suites have a minimum booking period of a week. A week? But I only want to check the waste paper basket. Nevertheless, that is the rule. Well, won't that be terribly expensive? Quite astonishingly so. After muttering the sort of things not permitted in suites, he agreed. A week, then, the receptionist wrote before asking for an astonishing amount of money. A moment later, Oscar returned to Vasi V and showed her the key to 413. How did you manage that? She asked, gathering more suitcases. I pretended to be a legal representative of the dodo setting and said that a poem he's working on was left behind and that if they didn't hand over the key, I'd get really cross. And the manager? She asked while they waited for a lift. Oh, he said having forgotten she'd watched the whole thing. Uh, he came to apologise. Apologise? The lift pinged and they got in. Yes, for the receptionist's hesitation in giving me the key. I didn't accept it, obviously, but I suspect my performance was just really convincing. I didn't mean to be intimidating, it just happens. She smirked. They rose and after another ping, alighted. Is that why you then paid them an astonishing amount of money? She asked. What? Oh, that was to keep them quiet about the whole thing. As was your crying while paying. Which floor are we on? He said, ignoring her and scowling at gilded numbers on doors. Thank you for listening to The Hotel Scenes from the Velvet Paw of Asquith novels by Thomas Caulfield. To find out more about these books and the emerging genre of new fable, visit velvetpawofasquith.com. To find out more about the author, visit thomascaulfield.com. 